Okay. So I, 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 I uh, uh, hope that you're all ready for, for, a, for a, uh, a dramatic change in pace here. <laughs> Uh, this next hour and a half is very different from uh, what we've been uh, covering uh, uh, so far. Uh, you won't see hardly any differential equations or <laughs> no asymptotics at all. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was indicated that there is interest in fires. Uh, some of you are, 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 are interested in fire research. And so one, one of the sessions in this, in, in, in this course then is, was, is, is to be devoted to, to fire research. And uh, so uh, that's what I propose to uh, talk about uh, 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 for, for this next, next hour and a half to kind of to, to try to review the field. I'm basing this largely on a course uh, that was a, a number of years ago in, in, in San Diego with a, a number of different experts in fire research came to give, uh, to give talks on the subject. And I put those talks together in the uh, uh, reading material that's available uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, for this session for this hour and a half is, is uh, that you have that available to you uh, is uh, based on a, a paper, a summary paper in progress in energy and, and combustion science that I put together on the basis of what the people said in that course. And my presentation pretty much follows that a lot, uh, 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 updates it in in, uh, in just in a few 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 different places. So, uh, why are we interested in fires? Well, uh, one of the things is uh, 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 well, there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of well, there are dangers. A lot of historic fires going back to the the famous fire fire of London, uh, and so that's that's one. One, one, one example, it really didn't burn, it burned a lot of houses, but not that much uh, area burned. Uh, there, there, the, the, the famous uh, Chicago fire uh, 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 on uh, 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 the 8th of October in 1871, uh, uh, burnt a whole uh, uh, more than 2,000 acres of, of land, and and uh, 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 a number of people died died in that fire. Uh, a, a fire that's not nearly as famous as the Chicago fire is the Peshtigo fire, which strangely enough occurred on the same day uh, uh, in roughly the same area. Uh, a little bit north of Chicago, mostly Wisconsin burned. In that case, three, more than three million acres burned, and actually around a, a thousand people died in the Peshtigo fire. Uh, uh, folklore says that what the Chicago fire was caused by Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicked over a burning lantern in, in the barn and caught the barn on fire and Chicago burned down. Well, well, uh, that's pure fictitious folklore. I mean, uh, she, she didn't, didn't kick down the, the, the lamp in, 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 in Wisconsin. What really was happening is fire weather was, was very severe on that day throughout that part. And so when, when, when uh, 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 very, dry, or very dry conditions, uh, uh, fuels lose lots of water, things become much mo moisture, things become much more, uh, uh, much more combustible. That's when fires can, can, can begin. And, uh, and uh, so this is really a, 
uh, uh, an, an indication of, of fire weather being, being uh, very significant for fires, especially for wildland fires, to some extent, and also for urban fires. And we know that very well in, in, uh, in California, where from time to time we have uh, 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 Santa Ana conditions that, that, that promote fires, and we're trying very careful in, 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 in that, that kind of a situation. The, uh, on this list that only goes up through 1970, uh, uh, um, the largest number of, uh, of, of deaths associated with, record, recorded deaths associated with, with fire is the Dresden fire. These, these um, Tokyo, Hamburg, uh, not, not this one, but Hamburg, Tokyo, and Dresden fires are all Second World War fires, fires that are definite or that were purposely set during the war by by incendiary bombings in in, in, in those places, and uh, uh, largely the U.S. or the Britain uh, planned Dresden very well in dropping the bombs in such a way that they would they would form a a, a fire. Fire a whirling effect and uh, felt a firestorm, and there was a very severe firestorm in Dresden that was living, uh, leading to that. Uh, not, o not, not on this list uh, um, is the uh, uh, Twin Towers fire in, in, in 2011. Uh, uh, that would be very small in acres burned, uh, but uh, uh, significant around 3,000 deaths associated with it, with that, uh, not as much as Dresden, but still, uh, well, uh, even three times as much as, as the Pestigo fire, as far as loss of life life was was concerned. Uh, that one also was uh, uh, purposely uh, 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 purposely started. Uh, 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 and uh, the, ex the, 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 the extent of, of uh, casualties from that fire then uh, depend on, uh, likely depended on, on, on urban fire codes, on, on uh, uh, the, uh, for example, it, it really the, there was a fires inside the, the, the it, w it wasn't aircraft, uh, impact or or aircraft fuel burning, but it was a lot the, the burning of the contents inside the uh, the tall twin towers that uh, that uh, 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 led to the collapse of the towers and the majority of of the, of the, of the lives lost in that fire. Uh, and uh, it's conceivable, uh, I, I call my heat transfer class. That if the insulation on the uh, uh, steel in in the twin tower construction had been uh, twice as thick, there's a good chance that the twin towers would not have come down, and and, and so and that the, they would still be standing. That the fires would have burned out before before the steel was weakened enough for the towers to to uh, to uh, 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 to to fall. And, and so, so there are things that we have, can learn even today about improving fire protection in, in buildings in urban, urban fire situations to prevent uh, uh, casualties like that, like that from happening. So let's look first at some of the, some of the basic aspects of, of, of fires. Uh, this is, uh, 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 the fires involve combustible materials. Uh, uh, the main um, uh, there, there's uh, 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 the the, the uh, uh, heat of combustion you've seen many times uh, on a mass basis. Uh, it's greater for gas like, uh, for hydrogen because it's a low mass, but the, the the fuels that we're most concerned with are liquids and especially especially solid fuels. Uh, li hydrocarbon liquids all have about the 
like gasoline is about the same, either combustion, although uh, methanol alcohols have, le have less. Uh, 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 and so, uh, uh, but uh, uh, things like uh, uh, solid uh, uh, construction materials are uh, less energetic, less amount of heat release when they burn than, uh, than uh, uh, typical gases or, or, or liquids. Uh, but uh, uh, in you know, e even metals such as steel and magnesium, they get hot enough they can burn. Uh, on a mass basis, uh, not so much uh, heat release, so, but, but do lead to, to, to high, high flame temperatures if, if they do, do burn. Uh, one of the ma major uh, uh, fuels of interest is, is the wood that's outside. <laughs> um, um, it's the wood, uh, they have roughly on the other of uh, 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 4,000 calories per gram is uh, roughly the heat, heat, heat release. Cellulose is a component of, of wood and, and uh, something that's been studied, the, the behavior which has been studied for, for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, in, in, in connection with, 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 fire, with fire, fire investigations. Uh, uh, fires, so then, the, as I was saying, the fires that, that, that main fires that are concerned with are involve uh, condensed fuels, uh, either liquids or solids. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but the heat release doesn't occur in the liquid or solid phase. I mean, the, you know, the liquid or solid has to gasify in some way and get into the gas, uh, 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 in, into the air. Where, where the combustion heat release occurs. And so, so uh, uh, gasification processes for fuels are, it's, are, it's relevant to understand gasification processes. They're kind of like two basic types of, of, of condensed fuels, the behavior in fires. One type, the, 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 the uh, process at, at the surface of, of the condensed Phase going from from uh, uh, condensed fuel to, to ga gasified fuel is one of of, uh, of interface equilibrium, and in that case, uh, Clausius Clapeyron equation would describe the mole fraction of the fuel in the gas in terms of the uh, uh, heat of vaporization per mole, the universal gas constant. It, it depends on the temperature, the temperature of the surface in this surface equilibrium approximation, uh, and Tb is the boiling temperature, and so uh, uh, the mole fraction is unity when the surface temperature is the normal boiling temperature, and it's less than, and in typical fires, the mole fraction will be a little, slightly, something less than, than, than unity, not, not, not equal to unity. So most liquids, uh, liquid fuels, have that surface condition. condition. Most, most solid fuels, on the other hand, uh, have finite rate uh, pyrolytic gas, gasification steps, which then be, can be described by the Arrhenius type expression uh, that you've seen, seen uh, m many times before, that the rate of mass loss per unit su surface area is, 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 has, has, depends in that exponential way or on, on temperature. So there are these two limiting types of fuels, and for most purposes, in analyzing a, a burning process, uh, you're concerned with either one type or the other, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, so, so that a good first approximation, depending on what the fuel is, is either that or that as a, to apply as a surface condition in, in an, analyzing uh, uh, the uh, 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 behavior of the surface and the fire. Other things that, that, that uh, 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 for some purposes, uh, may, uh, one may want, want, want to do is to estimate, uh, uh, to estimate heat of combustion, to estimate the heat release uh, when, when, when a material is firm. 
Here's a couple of solid materials. This is, this is uh, 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 glucosan. Uh, this is the monomer, the monomer of, 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 of a cellulose polymer. Uh, cellulose is a polymer of, 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 of glucosan, the structure of, so, so, are the, the, so, and so this, this is a, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, mon monomer of, of methyl, methyl methacrylate. Uh, and so plexiglass, polymethyl methacrylate, is a polymer with this, this unit and uh, another unit, and there's the degree of polymerization is the number of units, and the, and, the, and and so different condensed fuels have different degrees of polymerization, and uh, 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 and so different and different bond structures like that. Now, so from the, those bond structures, as Professor Ramsey has, has shown, you can identify bond energies, and so uh, one way to see what the, the chemical energy level of the fuel is, is to add up the, these bond energies associated with, uh, with uh, 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 each, of the, uh, uh, each, each of the bonds in the, uh, uh, I'll get there again, uh, each of the bonds in the, uh, 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 yeah, each of, each of the bonds in, 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 in the uh, 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 solid, solid uh, mo molecule. Um, um, and, then, uh, and then if you do that for the, for the fuel, uh, uh, this, this is an example for heptane, this is any fuel, uh, uh, the same for, the, uh, uh, for, for oxygen and nitrogen. And, and also add the bond energies for for products, the equilibrium products, carbon dioxide and H two O. Uh, 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 that will, can, can give you the 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 uh, a rough estimate of the heat of combustion uh, uh, of of any particular fuel. Okay, that'll give you a rough 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 estimate of the heat of combustion Q. Uh, so if you so so. And the heat of combustion is something that's 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 you want to know for any fuel, and, and so uh, 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 this would be a way a, a way to estimate it. You can estimate it with rough estimate of bond energy. I, I guess if you want the heat of combustion of a fuel nowadays, what you do is is, is Google it and find out what its heat of combustion is, uh, rather than doing this. But if you can't find it on the on <laughs> then, then and if you got a new material that you made, then you can make an estimate for by from this bond, bond energy approach. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's interested uh, of interest is the flame uh, is the uh, uh, flame temperature, uh, the temperature uh, 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 given the heat release that occurs, and a rough estimate of the flame temperature, the initial temperature plus uh, this heat release uh, in in the chemical process divided by the the weight, uh, the molecular weight of the products. And, Average heat capacity of the products typically, and for practical estimates in, in fires, it's about 0.3 calories per gram. So, this would give you an estimate of, of the flame temperature. These flame temperatures in the list are only for gaseous fuels. Uh, I didn't write down the list for the more interesting solid fuels. So, uh, uh, going on with this uh, gasification process, uh, uh, the uh, 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 going from a solid to to uh, to to a gas is, is typically for the, for these solid polymers involves depolymerization, and so the polymer then uh, 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 will will under heat uh, will will break down. Uh, 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 you, uh, simplest approximation for rates of polymer is a, this uh, 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 first order again Arrhenius expression for for rate it, it, the, the the depolymerization rate increases with uh, uh, with with temperature again in in a manner that can be approximated by an, an activation energy e so be for for depolymerization. A number of different polymers are listed here, uh, with uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, temperature range of you know, over which the paralysis typically occurs in, in practice, and, and uh, 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 that range is, depends then on the, uh, uh, to some extent, on the prefactor for the rate, but also on, on, on the, the uh, uh, activation energy. The uh, depolymerization process may be an unzipping to uh, uh, the monomer that I unit, or, or it may be more complex, and, and so different polymers have different yields of monomer uh, with uh, a very low yield for polymethyl, uh, polymethylene, uh, whereas uh, uh, poly, uh, 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 some, of, some of these, like polymethylmethacrylate, very high uh, 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 monomer yields tend to be an un unzipping process that, as I say, it's only in a first rough approximation, but, but for practical purposes, you can find uh, values of B and E in the literature for depolymerization to be used. Uh, uh, some uh, overall activation energies are uh, listed here for d different polymers. Uh, temperature range, the the uh, uh, the depolymerization rates do depend on uh, uh, the degree of polymerization. The degree of polymerization can be measured by the molecular weight of of, of, of the of the polymer, and and so it, so it varies from for different uh, 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 for different. Uh, 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 materials from one uh, with, with degree of polymerization as well as with the, with, with, with the material. Uh, uh, cellulose would, would, you know, uh, wood itself is, is, is composed of cell, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, and cellulose is the, in some ways the more uh, uh, scientifically studied uh, component a significant component uh, of wood, uh, uh, and there's there's a particular property of uh, of uh, uh, de depolymerization of, of of cellulose that's shared by by uh, other uh, solids such as har carbohydrates. A uh, rough formula for which the same breakdown as as formaldehyde, but uh, you know, two hydro roughly two hydrogens. If you looked at the glu glucose sand, there was six car carbons, five oxygens, and, and uh, twelve, I think, hydrogens. So it's, this uh, roughly the ba the idea. The, the main thing is that there there are two different uh, 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 paths that 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 happen that uh, when in 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 in. Uh, in depolymerization of these of these materials, uh, one is to pr produce ultimately purely gaseous CO and H2 that can burn for this. And another is to produce a, a solid, uh, uh, and uh, 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 a liquid or gas that can, that, that that can burn. And and th those two parallel paths. Uh, proceed at different rates with different temperature dependencies, okay? Uh, and so the total rate of mass loss is, is the sum of the, the rates by the, two, by the two paths. If you take cellulose in particular, there's this uh, um, uh, uh, low temperature path that, that goes to what people have called dehydro, dehydrocellulose uh, with, with uh, w water, which then goes on to uh, 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 form the char uh, 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 and combust some combustible gases. Uh, this is a low temperature path, but the high temperature path is the, it leads to to uh, primarily to unzipping to levo glucosan uh, uh, liquid. This is primarily levo glucosan uh, liquid. Uh, this is. This, both processes are endothermic. This is more endothermic than that. The, the char is exo formation is exothermic. So this is energetically neutral, but this requires energy. But they, the point is that they proceed at different rates. And 
So the rate of the first one, uh, and here's values in the formula I gave for B and activation energy, rough values for cellulose for both of the, these parallel paths. And so the, the uh, first path, the tar path, that leads to flaming combustion of, cell, of cellulose has a higher activation energy than the activation energy of the low temperature char path has a lower activation energy uh, for, for, for cellulose. Uh, and so there's like a crossover temperature around, we get crossover temperatures in all of this stuff we go. <laughs> we get it for hydrogen oxygen, we get it for, 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 for methane combustion. And here's another crossover temperature, if you like. Uh, this one is 280 centigrade where the uh, uh, rate of the char and, 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 and char path with the char path leads to glowing combustion uh, wood you know in the fireplace can glow without flames and the tar path leads to flaming combustion uh, uh, it gets hotter than it gives off enough enough uh, 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 h2co fuel that it that it that it can burn so uh, that's the uh, condensed phase aspect of, uh, of, uh, 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 of, of burning of, of, of solid fuels. Uh, 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 the gas phase aspect uh, is something we've been talking more about he here. You can illustrate that by think looking think of the candle. Uh, 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 if you look, you look at the candle burning, there's, there's both blue and there's yellow, right? And the yellow is really basically uh, uh, soot radiation from the yellow. So, so in this dark region, there's uh, uh, essentially no radiant energy. This is, there's lots of fuel that has vaporized into this region around the candle. Uh, and then the pyrolyzed uh, uh, fuel eventually, as as the Ramsey showed you in detail, because soot, whereas the, the hottest, the heat release is mainly uh, taking place in this blue region uh, around, around the outside of, uh, of, uh, 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 of, of the yellow. And so uh, uh, one thing that I've uh, uh, ha had a lot of success with in, in my youth and in, in, in dates is to, to, to look at the candle on the table and ask the person I was with, uh, well, where is the blue and where is the yellow? You know? Is the blue on the inside or on the outside? And uh, more often than not, I'll be told, oh, the blue, of course, is on the inside. Oh, the blue's not on the inside, it's on the outside. <laughs> uh, it works pretty well, give it a try. Anyway, uh, uh, Professor Sashadri has, for example, in this counterflow burner, looked in detail at the chemist, chemistry of this in this particular example with polymethyl mesacrylate. In, in, instead of being, he talked earlier today about counterflow uh, 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 combustion. This is a counterflow with the flow down on, uh, uh, on top of a flat polymethyl methacrylate surface giving rise to what would be correspond to the blue region in that previous picture. And uh, you can gas sample as a function of and measure as a function of distance from the surface from the PMMA in this kind of an experiment. Uh, and thermocouple determine the temperature profiles up to like 12, six, say around 1600K. This is in centigrade. And uh, uh, so there's lots of pyrolysis products that come off uh, that are shown here that, that then are, are burnt to, to eventually to CO2 and H2O in, in that kind of experiment. So it's possible to be, you know, plenty of studies of, uh, of that, that kind of uh, chemistry. So, uh, okay, so that you go from the solid or whatever to, 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 to the gas. And, and to the flames, <laughs> right, okay, so you have some flames, and now look, we have a fire with some flames uh, uh, here at the ground or something like that. 
and uh, the flames are hot and buoyant, right? And so, uh, uh, so what they do is give rise to uh, a rising, a buoyant, buoyant plume of, of hot gases. And so this would be the, uh, 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 the hot gas plume above, above a fire. Uh, 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 this goes back to, to the basic uh, fluid mechanics that uh, 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 Mr. kind of started started with uh, in in looking at these, some of these asymptotic processes. Uh, um, uh, 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 it's so of its interest. It's of interest, especially in wildland fires, and in, in, to, to to since since uh, for example this, this fire. It can have you know, firebrands that can be uh, raised in the plume and and move in the wind and to spread the fire. Well, uh, 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 being able to calculate or estimate plume structure is is uh, is some, something that that's that's relevant here. Uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, 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 since this is. Uh, uh, illustration of a simplified model of uh, buoyant plume structure. Uh, one uh, uh, the model the model would be a, a uh, whereas the, the the temperature profile is actually like that. Uh, a model would be a top hat profile where 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 uh, uh, the entire inside of the plume is at some temperature. The, the outside is at, at temperature t infinity. Associated with the higher temperature is a lower temp lower density, and so uh, uh, so the ga these heated gases then rise under the influence of gravity in, in the plume. And if you take uh, an element like that and make a mass and momentum apply integral mass and momentum conservation conditions to, to such an element. Uh, 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 the uh, 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 this is the the, the rate of uh, the, the rate of uh, this is uh, look at an, a distance d z in the vertical direction uh, uh, the change that the uh, 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 rate of flow of the mass conservation of, of mass in uh, 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 the, the rate of flow of mass out is the rate of flow of mass in from below, plus what the, the, rate, the rate the rate that's that's entrained from the, from the sides, and so so a mass conservation law is like that. Uh, 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 corresponding momentum conservation law is the rate of change of momentum uh, 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 is uh, uh, the the buoyant force, and the buoyant force is this. Uh, area times uh, the density difference and the acceleration of gravity, uh, and so this by by using this uh, mass, momentum, and and uh, energy conservation, uh, ch uh, density changes are small. Pressure is nearly constant in the horizontal uh, 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 direction, so that the density temperature product is constant. And uh, in plume theory, one thing that appears is 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 the the uh, this quantity uh, uh, rho f the weight deficiency the weight deficiency uh, uh, per unit time rho f in 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 the plume and uh, 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 right and and so uh, there. Is a similarity solution to those, those equations, uh, uh, um, uh, which which gives you a, a, a vertical velocity which decreases. The, the, the typically these these are turbulent situations, and so in the turbulent situation, typically the uh, inflow velocity is like ten percent of the upward velocity, uh, and so 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 uh, uh, here uh, then. V is related to W, and and so the parameters to be the variables to be solved for then are 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 the plume width B, uh, the density uh, rho inside the plume, and the upward velocity W, 
or the three variables uh, 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 with this expression from 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 uh, 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 from energy conservation. They're the two differential equations, and the solution then is is basically the linear growth of the plume that was shown, uh, but with the velocity increasing like height to the minus one third height above a virtual origin, so so that. Uh, 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 there's a virtual origin, and then the height above ground <laughs> is z is the height above ground plus the distance to the virtual origin, and uh, you can get the distance to the virtual origin uh, uh, and the density uh, difference decreases as as height to the minus five thirds according to this similarity solution. So so there are there are fluid. A, a, a useful uh, approximate fluid uh, variable descriptions for 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 plumes. So, uh, um, uh, if you apply a wind to the plume, then the, then then you can, with mass and momentum conservation, get an approximate expression, which I have written down for 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 the bending of the plume in the wind. If you apply a wind to 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 a, a, a burning a fire that's not uh, uh, in a uh, that, that's that's asymmetrical, uh, then uh, the, this separation is the, the fire is almost like a a bluff body that's and if it's asymmetrical, it can produce uh, 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 vortices in the in in the wake of it, or if it's L shaped, it can produce a vortex like this. Um, uh, and uh, 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 these vortices are fairly strong, especially if there's smoke or fire in them. Fire whirls. Uh, there have been examples of, and I didn't. I don't have any pictures, but there are plenty of pictures out, out there in the in the in the forest fire. This happened to be a model for for a fire that uh, that uh, took in many lives in in, in Tokyo uh, uh, a number of years ago. Uh, um, uh, 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 where you can e estimate the the uh, strength of the vortex uh, just for, for, from fluid dynamic uh, considerations in in, uh, in, uh, in in fires, and so 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 there are a number. Uh, the the fluid <coughs> dynamics fundamentally is turbulent, uh, uh, but there are ways to make reasonable estimates estimates of that. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, so, so that's one as uh, uh, the basic aspect. This maybe should have preceded the other in a way. Uh, 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 the basic aspect of of uh, 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 of how a fire works is that uh, there's a condensed material that's burning uh, wood or. Or, uh, or uh, fuel, or whatever. Uh, but it, but we've said that it takes energy. It takes energy to go from uh, uh, from from the uh, from the condensed phase to 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 the gas phase. The energy for. for for pyrolysis or for vaporization, uh, if L over W is the energy required per unit mass for gasification, then a simple formula like this tells you that the rate of mass gasification depends on the the the, the energy, uh, the rate of mass loss per unit area per unit time depends on the on the rate uh, requires a certain rate of energy input per unit area per unit time, which is Related to the, by this uh, uh, energy required for gasification, so the rate, the burning rate of, of a uh, of any f uh, fire with a condensed fuel uh, depends on well requires a certain amount of energy, which is roughly a straight line as energy required like that. And uh, uh, the, where does that energy come from? Well, the fire has a feed is a feedback process. The, the energy comes from from the heat release from the flames, and 
And uh, so this convective and radiative energy transfer, typically as the burning rate increases, the uh, 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 heat flux back to the fire increases. But if it's really uh, uh, too high, then the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 burning flakes take place too far away so that uh, 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 convective heat transfer is back to the, to, to the condensed material is less efficient. Uh, uh, the uh, burning rate is determined by the, the uh, in this feedback process, by the rate at which energy is provided to the uh, dense phase. Uh, it must be equal to the rate at which it needs for steady burning. Uh, 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 as you increase radiant energy, the uh, amount of radiation from the fire, then the feedback rate, the, the radiant contribution increases, and so you have an increase in, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in the rate of energy provided. Uh, there are special cases in which there may be two stable uh, intersections, which would require then one that stable intersection in which uh, but in most cases, there's only one intersection in most fires uh, for that. Um, uh, uh, there's a very uh, uh, famous set of experiments in Russia by Blinov and Kudyakov, in which they measured the burning rate of pans of uh, uh, diameters from all from from uh, 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 a half a centimeter up to 100 meters, 1,000 meters, really big storage tanks, and, and measured, and with, they set them on fire, uh, li liquid fuel, and, and measured burning rate in, in, in this grams per square centimeter of surface per unit time. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, this feedback, uh, condition, uh, uh, well, typically then the energy required is the energy required to heat up the fuel to the surface temperature plus the energy for gasification. Uh, 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 or there, but there may also be some energy losses from the fuel, so a, a, uh, a more complete ex so it's an expression for a steady burning rate is, is, is this one here. And this then, uh, uh, this TS is, 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 the, is the gasification temperature, which is listed here, roughly gas, gasification temperatures for different solid fuels. Uh, um, uh, if the uh, uh, heat transfer me mechanism is convection, if it's laminar convection, then, then the curve looks like this, and, 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 and radiation dominates. There can be a minimum, and then radiation causes an increase in burning rate uh, up to a, a, a situation like that. And so there was a number of dis discussions of that kind of measurements of, of burning rates. Uh, uh, so let me let's jump from from <laughs> we jump from uh, 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 forest fire plumes to uh, uh, to bur burning. Uh, 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 to burning uh, uh, burning storage tanks of oil, oils back to uh, actually to a point in which uh, the the burning rate is controlled not by the rate of feedback of energy from the flame to the to the fuel, but rather by the air supply in the in, in the room. Uh, that there, there's a, a a window or a door in the room uh, that door can uh, can can restrict the airflow. Such fires are called ventilated, ventilation controlled fires. And uh, uh, so uh, one way to, if, if, it's, if it's overventilated, then the burning rate would be calculated, uh, estimated the way I indicated before. If it's ventilation, ventilation controlled, uh, then uh, the uh, uh, burning rate is, is controlled not by uh, the, the rate at which fuel is, is produced, but rather by the rate at which air becomes available. Okay. 
And this is a way Phil Thomas uh, 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 showed how to estimate uh, uh, the uh, uh, rate, the ventilation control burning rate. The idea is that the gases outside are uh, uh, at a lower temperature and they, ha they have a, a, a lower density. And so, so the pressure gradient outside uh, in this hydrostatic pressure equilibrium case, the PDZ is minus rho G, it ha has a, a, a uh, uh, rho is greater, rho is greater outside, this has a, a, a steeper slope than the pressure inside, that inside is a lower density, and so this, this, slope, this slope is less. So, so there's, there's an, uh, uh, an equilibrium, a zero difference at some point in the opening, above that opening, the the pressure uh, 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 yeah the pre the pressure inside above that uh, opening is greater than the pressure outside. Below that opening, the pressure inside is less than the pressure outside, and so there's and if you if you if you take the pressure difference and say okay that with, and you say it's not viscous controlled, but it's, it's dynamic controlled pressure difference. Delta P is, is, is like a rho V squared. Uh, seems to me like I'm talking about the, the uh, uh, detonation problem that I talked about earlier. We had P plus rho V squared. Anyway, um, um, yeah, so, so uh, uh, the difference in density times dH is rho v squared. So, the, so the inflow velocity then is proportional to the square root of, of of delta rho over rho rho gH. That tells you how fast the uh, 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 how much the air air can, can come in. And Phil suggested that uh, so so that rho v a is the flow rate of air, and uh, so so the the uh, Burning rate, uh, the rate, the, the rate at which fuel is consumed, is controlled under those conditions by the flow rate of air, and so so the, the burning rate is the stoichiometric requirement uh, for the f flow rate of air, and that's then proportional to the area of the opening, but also the square root of of the height of the opening. The higher the height is, the greater the rate is, and uh, uh, the burning rate in grams per second. He says for for we're putting in. Uh, areas in, in meter and heights in meters uh, that has that is a, a rough useful for rough numerical estimates of rates of burning of ventilation controlled fires for, for urban fires. Another aspect of uh, is of interest in is flame heights. Um, uh, so this is for an open fire uh, in the open atmosphere, open air. There's some measured flame height, which depends on the horizontal size. There's, this is like if the, the flame height depends on a Froude number. This is a Froude number type of correlation. And, and the mass burning rate squared divided by the size, uh, uh, then the, the flame height is, uh, uh, increases with that. Everything from uh, uh, small uh, turbulent uh, gas flames in the laboratory to uh, 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 a whiskey warehouse me measured uh, flame heights above that, uh, to a forest fire in France measurement uh, at, at, uh, uh, with, with powers ranging from one third here to not two fifths, but two tenths. Sorry about that. That's five as a misprint. Should be ten, two tenths, not two fifths, point two. Uh, in, 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 it bends over. Th these are for buoyancy controlled fires. Uh, if you get to high enough uh, flow rates, they become momentum controlled and it bend bends over even, even more. But this is an approximate correlation of, then of uh, flame heights uh, that's uh, for, for fires of, of, of different, as a function of burning rates for fires of different sizes. So both M and uh, L vary, vary there. Okay, let, uh, so, so let's go on and, uh, is there any, maybe I should, is there any questions about, about what I've done so far? Or?
have been I've covering uh, covered a number of aspects of of, of fire. So. I don't hear anything. Yeah. Okay. Yes. One question. Yeah. In the last slide, like, where you have shown that ventilation controlled fire. Yes. Yeah. Why did the outside uh, uh, have a special uh, variant in particular region? Well, uh, both inside and outside, uh, the approximation is hydrostatic equilibrium. This is a hydrostatic e equilibrium. Uh, but Yes. Well, I mean, uh, yes, it's, it is significant over over the height of uh, of uh, 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 of a door or a window in a home. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, any anything else? Yeah. No? Yes. In uh, estimating the steady burn rates for solid fuel, yes. uh, when we uh, write the flux balance at the surface, that, that provides a relationship between the mass burn rate and the surface temperature. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, yes. And, and uh, to close this expression, uh, we use the Arrhenius relationship. Yes. Right. Uh, will, the, will the Arrhenius parameters estimated from uh, <coughs> For example, thermogravimetric measurements at, at very low heating rates, uh, will it be accurate under these conditions, uh, burning conditions where the fluxes are very large? Uh, the uh, measurements are done at the same at the same flux levels as in the fire. Uh, so, so uh, uh, typical uh, uh, typical heating rates for well for for heat thermogravimetric analysis. Uh, can go well. Uh, 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 can go up uh, 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 in, into that range. Uh, it, there is some variation with temperature that, that, uh, of, the, of the activation energy. That's true. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, these these fires don't. Increase at a thousand Kelvin per minute. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, um, a, and a, so another aspect then of of, of of fires, especially now jumping back to wildland fires, is that they spread. Okay. And so one thing that. That, that that is of interest is is the rate of, of, of fire fire spread and here I've drawn what one two three four five different types of of uh, geometries in which fire is spreading this here here is a vertical sheet for example of polymethylmethacrylate with the fire spreading down the sheet uh, 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 this is a, a planted rod uh, with the fire spreading up the, the slanted rod. This is a, a bed of, of fuel uh, uh, with the fire spreading into the bed. This is a liquid pool, uh, and the fire is spreading across the surface of the liquid. This is a forest, <laughs> and the fire is spreading spreading through through the forest. There's so, uh, but you can ask yourself, uh, how, what's the simplest way uh, to estimate the rate at which uh, fire is, is spread? And in all cases, the spread is caused by transport of something, I mean typically heat, uh, from the fire itself into the stuff that's, that's not burning, into, in, into the, the fresh fuel. But it takes a certain amount of energy for the, for the fuel to get up to it temperature at which it starts to pyrolyze or burn or whatever it gets gasified uh, 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 rapidly enough. If delta H is the, uh, is the enthalpy change of the fuel needed for, uh, to get to it to an ignition temperature, an ignition temperature is often used in place of, of an activation energy as a, as a, as a, as a more rough approximation to, to uh, uh, surface temperatures for 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 in, fu in fires. 
then, then the spread rate uh, is, is uh, the density of the liquid um, is, is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, then if you apply a, 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 a heat flux, Q energy per unit long, that, and, and the energy per unit area per unit time, uh, and uh, so the, 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 the spread rate is, is the energy required per unit mass times the mass uh, per unit area per unit time. Uh, and so the spread rate V is, 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 can be, be estimated from this very simple formula for all of these, all of these different uh, uh, configurations. Uh, 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 to do that, you have to conceptually identify what part is fresh and what part is burning. And so you have to identi identify a surface of fire inception. And so the fire is on the one side of the surface and energy is transferred to the other side, side of the surface. Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 what, what, what is being transferred? Well, at a very small scale, uh, maybe active radicals may be transferred by diffusion. No, that's not usual true for fires. But they, but they can be heat conduction through the gas may be the mechanism. Heat conduction through the condensed material may be the mechanism. Uh, uh, convective heat transfer from the gas is, is often important. A liquid convection is important. A lot of times motion of the liquid in, in, in liquid fuel particles. Could could be uh, 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 fuel deformation can 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 be be important. You know, we burnt uh, arrays of matchsticks. You know, and you, if a fire on on one matchstick will cause pyrolysis of the adjacent match, matchstick, which then will deform and catch the fire on the first one, and and uh, so motion of the fuel itself, and then carry the fire over to the Second one as it deforms, and so, so motion of the uh, uh, of the fuel itself can 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 be, be a mechanism for for fire spread. Uh, radiation from flames is another uh, uh, radiant energy transfer. A lot of fire spread uh, studies are are uh, uh, based on ideas or correlated to the ideas that. Especially in, in forest fires, of radiant energy transfer uh, 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 is important. Uh, or maybe uh, the, the radiant energy transfer in fire is usually thought of being from the flames, but it also could be from, from the surface of the burning fuel. Or in large fires, it, what could be transported across this inception point are firebrands that are picked up here. And carried over and dropped. <laughs> so uh, 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 a recent one that, that, that I didn't that could be number ten could be uh, flame contact. I mean, you could have uh, 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 say in wind blown flames, uh, it, 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 the, the flame it's, itself may be may may move across the surface in contact. So, so there are a number of different, many different physical mechanisms that can, can be considered. And depending on the mechanism, you can get different uh, uh, approximate formulas for, for, rates, for rates of spread, rates of fire spread. And uh, so, one, so one formula, I've just written on this slide, one, two, three, four, five formulas. Uh, there are plenty other formulas, but the formula then depends on the physical mechanism. So, uh, uh, all right. So, so uh, one physical mechanism. Let me see. Uh, uh, suppose you have a, a, a very thin sheet, so it's thermally thin. Uh, so, so, so that the theta sheet is of thickness L, and it's and it's but it's heated uh, uh, throughout. And, and, and there's radiant flux, uh, 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 so the, 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 the situation is this one with a sheet, a vertical sheet, a thickness L. This is radiating from radiant flux. Uh, 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 
uh, from the fire. Uh, uh, so uh, if, if the radiation has emissivity, then, then the radiant energy flux is epsilon sigma of a Boltzmann constant, t to the fourth, okay, uh, 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 over the flame height. If H is a flame height, then it depends on the angle uh, between the uh, uh, the angle between the the, the fire and the uh, uh, and, and the and the uh, 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 fuel, uh, 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 and, and but then uh, uh, and so, and so the, the formula is 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 this is, is finally is that formula for for the spread rate for 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 uh, downward. Anywhere from down, like so, so, so downward uh, to horizontal, horizontal spread, or to downward or horizontal spread along, along a uh, uh, along a thermally thin sheet. Lots of 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 uh, of, of, of combustible materials, fossil solids, are not thermally thin. If 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 uh, if, if the fire is is uh, is moving. Uh, rapidly enough, then, then only only a surface layer of of the of the material is heated. Uh, uh, an estimate of the thickness of, of 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 that of the surface layer is the thermal diffusivity of the of the solid uh, 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 uh Times uh, well in, in in this case uh, 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 for a thermostat heated layer thick. So it, it take this this formula and replace the uh, uh, thickness this L by 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 the the uh, uh, by this therm thermal thickness which is uh, 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 this. Uh, uh, Spread rate over over the flame height uh, uh, times the, the square root of alpha, and, and you get a different expression uh, uh, for for the spread rate, uh, which is uh, uh, because the, the, because the spread rate then in, influences the effective thickness. The greater the, the spread spread rate is, the less the the effective thickness is, and so so. Uh, you, you get that uh, uh, in in smoldering. There's it's the uh, 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 heat release in smoldering uh, diffusion coefficient of oxygen uh, uh, that appears in 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 the formula uh, for 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 fuel beds. Another parameter that comes in uh, 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 is is the the packing fraction or the fraction of the bed volume that's occupied by fuel, you don't have to heat up the whole everything. Well, you only have to heat up the fuel in the bed, so so it's so so the what's uh, the energy required per unit mass is this packing fraction times that, which appears um, uh, and uh, 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 if 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 you combine that with with Thermally thin, uh, 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 thermally thin elements in, in in the fuel bed. Then then the surface to volume ratio of the fuel elements also appears in the spread rate formula. So you so you so depending on what the situation is, you, you can get a number of different estimates of of uh, uh, an interesting one is there experimentally. Not with polymethyl methacrylate, but with uh, 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 with uh, 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 polyformaldehyde, a paraformaldehyde that's not a very high uh, uh, um, uh, degree of polymerization. Uh, it melts, and and these burning uh, things fold, move down the surface. So. So in that case, the physics of the spread process is the rate at which uh, liquid drop <laughs> liquid liquid moves down a solid a solid surface. Uh, 
I don't, I don't have a formula for that spread rate, but the point is that, that, that there are lots of different physical mechanisms for, for spreading fires. And, and if you want a reasonable estimate of spread rate, you should use the using, uh, uh, reasoning with the physics of whatever the mechanism of the spread turns out to be. Okay. Uh, ignition of fires is, is another, another uh, subject that's been studied. Uh, 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 there the idea is that uh, uh, if you have a low, as it's kind of what you were mentioning in a way, if you have a low heat flux, if it's too low, then, then you, you keep radiating all the, all the time and you don't heat it up to, 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 to an ignition temperature. So below a certain energy flux, you can ignite. Uh, 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 so there's a, a, uh, uh, a minimum heat flux. So, so there's a critical <laughs> heat flux that's required to cause ignition. There's no ignition until you get to a critical heat flux. Now, if you heat the, if you have higher, higher and higher heat flux after that, eventually, if you, if 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 you if you uh, 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 heat it very rapidly, it's not it's not the flux itself, but it's just just putting enough energy in to get things uh, going. So instead of a critical heat flux, a, a critical energy is required in the ignition time versus energy flux, that, that's a, a, uh, 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 a curve like that. Most, uh, lots of experiments are, uh, the experiments are done two ways with these radiant heaters uh, and, and, and uh, material that's being ignited. Uh, a lot of experiments are done at, like at NIST elsewhere. Uh, um, uh, one is just to, 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 to irradiate the surface. The other is to put a little flame nearby. Uh, it's called a piloted ignition experiment. Put a little flame nearby to, to, to ignite the vapors that come off. And, and uh, uh, yeah, with piloted ignition for many materials, there is a range in which the, the pilot will will ignite the the, the flame. But if the, if you but the, the flame then goes goes away again. <laughs> It, it quenches, uh, it just flashes across the surface and quenches. So if you took the pilot away, it wouldn't ignite. But so there's a transient flaming that can occur prior to, to sustained flaming at, at the critical, critical heat flux condition. So, there, the, so flammability of, of, uh, of, mater, of materials then, then me, me, measured in experiments like, uh, in ignition experiments like that. Extinction, uh, uh, this, this is a <laughs> maximum temperature versus Domko. So Chaudhry showed this <laughs> same picture. Define the Domko in number four, you either based on convective or diffusive effects. Uh, uh, the point is that uh, when Domko in number gets small enough, then you can extinguish, then the, 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 the fires are diffusion flames, and so these, these diffusion flames can distinguish a, a small enough Domkoller number. So extinction conditions uh, uh, can be defined in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of Domkoller numbers. Uh, a very rough, for, for typical urban fuels, cellulosic fuels, uh, a, a, a rough approximation to this uh, is say, okay, just calculate the flame temperature, adiabatic flame temperature, and, it, and it's, if it gets to be below a value of about 1600K, then the fire will extinguish. Well, maybe not 1600, maybe 1500, uh, but uh, something in that range. And so uh, uh, this is a, uh, a condition that's a uh, criterion that can be used in practice for fire, fire, fire extinguishing, uh, fire suppression people. Uh, 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 fire suppression, putting out fires, is uh, 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 a subject to study itself. Uh, there, there are a number of general uh, 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 general approaches. One idea is to to isolate the fuel, uh, so, so so that the fuel doesn't. Uh, 
uh, receive oxygen. Another idea is to isolate the, oxi the oxidizer so that remove the fuel from the oxidizer, the so-called fire triangle. You, you can cool the tense phase, you can cool the gas phase, for example, you, you can use uh, uh, chemical inhibitors that operate homogeneously or heterogeneously, or even in, for, for a number of fires, if you impose a, a high enough velocity, you can blow, blow the flames away from the fuel, blow the flame away uh, is, is, a, is an, a, 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 another strategy for, for fire, fire suppression. Uh, 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 there are complicating factors associated with fire suppression, such as going into wildlands and mopping up what's burning uh, afterward uh, uh, at the end, uh, end of the fire. This last uh, uh, view graph it just makes a few statements uh, of things about, about uh, urban and, uh, and wildland fires. One is that uh, 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 there's more and more work, especially nowadays, uh, well, in, in computation in most all fields, but in particular uh, computations uh, uh, for uh, advancing uh, methods uh, uh, for, for fire modeling. Uh, there, there are models, uh, <coughs> a famous model of FDS, fire, FDS fire dynamics simulation from, from, from NIST for calculating fire spread through, uh, 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 through buildings and things like that. They're good, but, but they're, they're, they're capable of, of being improved. And so, for example, Factory Mutual is, is working now on, on uh, improvements uh, uh, to uh, uh, this, this, this fire dynamic simulation approach for, 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 for fires. Uh, uh, there are also uh, 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 I didn't mention flashover. Uh, flashover is, is a, something that fire people are really very much interested in uh, 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 for, for room fires. I mean, you can have a small fire in the room that grows and grows and then all of a sudden, the whole room is, seems to be on fire. Uh, it's like a transition from then from from the uh, uh, fire not being ventilation controlled to the fire being vent ventilation controlled. And the question of when and how flashover occurs is very important in firefighting and for 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 urban fires. Uh, uh, the their models for for smoke motion is can be important because fires get have smoke and then smoke can, can be transported through the buildings or whatever. Uh, th these, that's just fluid mechanics and so that's, that's simpler or basically fluid mechanics. So that's simpler than, 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 than fire spread modeling itself. Uh, uh, for large fires, mass fires, especially mass urban fires, there are so many variables <laughs> that uh, even after non-dimensionalization, there's so many variables that, that it's a difficult problem that, uh, to, 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 to model uh, uh, mass fires in urban, urban, uh, urban uh, configurations. And, uh, and uh, uh, so there's plenty of work that can be done in that area. Uh, the, the, I mentioned this, this modeling for, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, urban fires, there's also modeling for spreads, uh, spread of, of, of wildland fires. Uh, most of the modeling of wildland fires was developed uh, here in France, Italy. Uh, uh, most of that uh, modeling work is based on the idea that, that, that the, the, the physical mechanism for the spread is, is radiant energy transfer. Uh, they do recognize that convective but for convenience in, 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 the, in developing the model, even the convective component is, is, is transferred into a, an effective radi radiant energy transfer for calculating spread rates. But uh, 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 convective heat transfer, and especially 
flame contact, there's a recent paper in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences uh, uh, out of uh, Missoula uh, uh, a fire laboratory. They've done a number of experiments there recently um, on, uh, uh, on fire spread in, in fairly large models where they've uh, uh, made model forests in the, la in the laboratory but wind-driven fire. So if you look at a wind-driven fire uh, in a special, uh, uh, the wind blowing over the fire gives rise to things like Goitler vortices, which carry uh, 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 flames into the unburnt, unburnt material and, and uh, 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 contact of those flames with, with combustible elements farther downwind uh, can contribute uh, significantly from these experiments to rates of fire, fire, recent experiments to rates of fire spread. And that physical phenomenon is not in any of these uh, uh, wildland fire models even. So it's not been even, so, so, so there's more physics to be being studied, be, being understood about, about uh, 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 spread rates, spread rates of fires. Uh, this, this is an example in which uh, 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 construction of small scale, of, mo of, mo of smaller scale models uh, gave some understanding of of observations that were made in in uh, 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 for, for large uh, f forest fires. It was. Uh, 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 actually, less than a year ago, that I spent a few days up in Montana on an island in the in a uh, I forget the name of the river, <laughs> uh, uh, sitting uh, in in a, this uh, uh, where looking at films from the the, the Forest Service of of different large scale fires in 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 Alaska uh, or elsewhere. Uh, Australia uh, fire spread, many showing uh, uh, fire whirls and fire whirls uh, picking up the the brands and uh, trying to ask how how would the best way to model or describe that kind of phenomena, impressive phenomena, but interesting things to be done. So there's, in my opinion, much more research to be done in that area, so I would encourage those of you who are interested in that kind of thing to, uh, by all means, continue your research. So uh, uh, that's a, a really quick, rough overall <laughs> overview of fire research from my personal perspective. Uh, are there any questions then? <laughs> any further questions? <laughs> I think my question is a bit repetitive to you, Varun, sir. Uh, what is the major reason uh, of using apparatus like uh, FPA or uh, cone calorie meters for determining the thermal properties of material in case of fires compared to the data from the TGA? Uh, well, I mean, you, you want to do something, right? And, and so there's something to, so that is, these are reasonable ways to, to get certain uh, information about fires from, from laboratory experiments. Uh, these are controlled laboratory experiments, so it's one I item of input. Exactly how you define, uh, how you design a cold cal calorimer, calorimeter, uh, these designs are, are evolving. There's, uh, so they're, they're different. Uh, there are modifications to, 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 to cone cal calorimeters. Uh, that are that are suggested. Uh, 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 there's Fernandez Palio's fist configuration is 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 a, is a use is an interesting. One. Right, so so uh, 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 thermogravitic analysis. Uh, uh, Differential scanning uh, experiments; these all give you in certain information, but they don't tell you everything. And the cone calorimeter gives, gives you certain information, but doesn't tell you anything. 
but uh, getting information under con conditions where you know what they are, so they're controlled conditions, is more helpful than not knowing what the conditions are. So, yeah. Is it because of the, I mean, you get a different set of properties if you expose the material to the higher heat fluxes, or I mean, what is the major reason that? The major reason for what? Uh, for using these uh, special uh, experimental ways to get the data for fire, especially for fire. Uh, 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 One reason was uh, the activation energy changes with the temperature, and uh, since in fires you get higher temperature, yes. the uh, coefficients changes. So, uh, what are the other driving parameters to, I mean, to uh, choose these methods over the conventional methods to uh, get the thermal properties? Uh, you the, choose the cold. Co the, the cone calorimeter over over what? Uh, over TGA. Mm -hmm. Over TGA? Yes. Uh, uh, well, uh, TGA is 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 fundamental. Is uh, TGA is really is, is a better way to get an overall activation energy. It's it's a fundamental measurement for for, for an overall activation energy. But the cold cal calorimeter is closer to to to. <laughs> A real fire situation, and so if things are going to be behave differently uh, in 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 the in the in the cold calorimeter calor type of type of, of configuration, then that's something worth knowing. It's not, but it's not. But I would not say that if I if I derive a uh, an overall activation energy from PDA and another one from from the cold calorimeter, and they're different. I'm not going to say that the TGA is wrong and the cloak camera is right. I'm just going to say that they're different. <laughs> and, uh, re regarding ignition, ignition criteria, uh, if you have, uh, if you're trying to simulate a fire, in, in case of experiments, it is uh, easy to ignition criteria. You uh, look for a sustained flame spread and you define the ignition criteria, right? In terms of uh, temperature or uh, in terms of heat flux that you are getting, but uh, while simulating the same experiment, I mean, how how do you decide the ignition criteria, which is which which will be a better basis for deciding the ignition, like uh, mass loss rate or the surface temperature, which uh, yeah, for a simulation, if you want to simulate. Yeah, again, it depends on the situation, on the configuration. I mean, if you want an application for a, for a. Uh, 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 for 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 fires that are going to have, uh, 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 I mean, the whole ignition uh, uh, curve is, is, is relevant, and uh, uh, the 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 part of it at, at high flux is, is relevant to, 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 to high flux fires. The part at low flux is relevant to to, to low, lower lower energy flux energy flux fires. And so you can't just apply uh, directly, but you need to address whatever the, the situation will, you expect to encounter, I guess. It's not a very satisfactory reply, but about all I can say. <laughs> is, is it the same for the uh, extinction criteria also? You, you mentioned a dam yes. polar number criteria, right? For a Yes, yes. So, I mean, is it applicable too? I mean, is it like a universal parameter, or it again depends on the situation of the fire? It's it's what it's a universal parameter parameter in, in in that you can always choose to 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 describe uh, extinction from that by using using that parameter. How how you would use it would depend on condition. Uh, 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 whether you would use it would depend on what you want to do. I mean. Uh, 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 as I say, a lot, a lot of practical fire situations don't use it. They just say, "Okay, I'm going to reduce the abiotic flame temperature to uh, 1600 K, and the fire will go out." And so that's an alternative to to a dump colonic criterion that's that's has some approximate validity, and 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 so the dump colonic doesn't have to be used, but it, but 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 it can be used. <laughs> okay.